All right, so part two of the class, we're, we're not going to get into the coding aspect just yet. So if you've got the work, the code, and all of that from last time, we won't need it just yet, because we're going to need to talk about first about setting up our development environment. We used simply Notepad++ last time, and we were up and running quickly. We wrote the code in Notepad, we checked it in the web browser, that's all we needed. But we were focused on a web project. Now we're going to focus on mobile development. We're going to focus on making that into a real app that can be downloaded at the real app stores. The iTunes App Store, the Android App Store, Windows App Store, the real app stores. But that requires a lot of setup. Not that it's hard, it's that it's complicated. Uh, and I believe things can be complicated but not hard. I believe something that is complicated has a lot of steps a lot of things to do, but each individual thing to do perhaps is not that hard. And the first time we set these things up, maybe it's a little confusing and all of that, but I'll have handouts this time because, again, there's no book that I really have to, that we can really fall back on to guide us to this. I've got handouts that explain this procedure. So the first thing we'll do, go ahead and open up your web browser, any web browser. And the first thing we'll look at is you can go to the website developer.apple.com. Developer.apple.com. So Apple is one of the big operating systems, mobile operating systems. iOS, of course. Um, they are in competition with Android, so you can also look at developer.android.com. So there's a portal at apple.developer, I mean developer.apple.com. There's a portal at developer.android.com, and there's also one at developer.windows.com. This is, these are the home page portals of where you would go to get the software, to get the documentation, to get the credentials to become a developer for these platforms. So Android is the biggest market share of all. I think they're like at 80% market share globally on mobile devices. More people globally have an Android device than any other, even though iPhone, iOS, has a larger mind share. I think when people think mobile devices more and more, it's like, oh, iPhone, iPhone. But the numbers show Android's got the biggest market share. And Microsoft has their own mobile ecosystem, which hasn't really worked. They're like at 2% market share. But they've got like 90% market share on desktop devices. And what we're going to learn in this class, we will be able to create apps for all devices iPhones, iPads, Samsung Android devices, Motorola Android devices, Asus tablets, Windows 10 tablets, Windows, uh, Windows phones, Windows tablets, Surface, all of that. We will be able to create apps for all the devices based on what we've learned last month, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Yes? What languages does Google have used? Google has traditionally used the language of Java to make their apps, which is different than JavaScript. So the problem is that, that you need a certain language for this platform, you need a different language for this one, and a different for that one. You need Java, which is different than JavaScript, traditionally to make Android apps. You need C Sharp, traditionally, to make Windows apps. And you need either Objective-C or Swift to make Apple apps. You need three huge programming languages for every device. Yes? What's the abbreviation iOS? iOS, uh, it just stands for I operating system. You know, they've taken the word I and put it on everything, which doesn't really mean anything. But OS is operating system. So I is just iPhone or 
iPhone, I think they had it something in the beginning, if you ask Steve Jobs, he, they had some vision that it was I for, I don't know, interactive or I personally or something, some sort of marketing speak. But then OS is operating system. And which company are we going to anymore? Apple is Apple. Apple is Android the top company. Is to Google. Google. So Google owns Android. Um, and then Apple is iOS, Windows is, uh, Microsoft is Windows. So we would need to uh, learn all of these languages. We would need to uh, create accounts on all of them and distribute our, our app in the old days. Because let's say I take a class or I read the documentation for Android, the biggest operating system, mobile. Let's say I go here and I learn everything about Android for free. It's all for free. It's open source. And I, get, I become a pro at this, and then I want to publish uh, my app to the Android App Store. I can. Then let's say I want to reach also the people on an iPhone or an iPad. Well, I would need to reprogram my app. It's a different language. I learned Java to make my app for Android, then I'd have to learn Objective-C for the other operating system. And let's say then I also want to make my app to run on Windows. I have to learn another language. I have to reprogram my app again in another language, C-sharp. So that's a big detriment to people. That's why oftentimes you see the app has been released but for iOS only first. And then a few months later, once, with, once they get a programmer, they reprogram it for uh, Android. So it's a big task to learn each of the languages for each of the operating systems. The good news is that in this class, because we've learned HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, we're going to use... Let's check out this website. Cordova.apache.org Because of the challenge of making an app for all ecosystems, there have been various projects that are trying to smooth that out, that are trying to make it easy to develop for all the devices. This is one of the teams, one of the biggest ones, one of the most famous and powerful ones, Cordova. They are an open source project, and they are behind many of the modern software that lets us create cross-platform projects. Cordova. Mobile apps with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Target multiple platforms with one code base, free and open source. So instead of learning Java and then having to learn Objective-C and then C-sharp, you learn these common web languages. And then via Cordova, it basically translates or converts the web languages to the right native language for each platform, basically. Behind the scenes, Cordova changes that HTML code to Java code. Behind the scenes, Cordova changes the JavaScript command to the Objective-C command. You don't have to really know how it does it, you just know that it does it. We have to learn, uh, you know, these languages, yeah, but we offer many more classes in most colleges and in our college for web languages rather than Java or Objective-C or C-sharp. It's more common to know web languages than these uh, app languages. Christian? There are some limitations uh, specifically performance-wise if we uh, are creating advanced types of games well, what's happening is we're writing our game in one language, which then has to be translated to another language. So there is some performance hit when you're dealing with advanced kinds of apps, like memory-intensive and graphics-intensive apps like games. What we're creating in this class, no problem at all. Most kinds of apps should not have any problem, even, a, and even an app like Facebook. That's not really memory-intensive. It's complex to do things, but it's not memory and graphic <coughs> intensive. That's the biggest detriment performance-wise. 
So this um, this is what we'll be using in this class, uh, Cordova. But we will still look at the various portals of the developers of the operating systems. Because, for example, if, if you have um, an Android device and your friend has an iOS device and, you know, you ever take a peek on their device, it looks different. The icons are different. The style of the operating system is different. They look at your device and it's different. They, why is that button there? What does this little icon mean? The style of each operating system is different. Think about it also Windows and Mac. If you're on Windows, you know, Windows 7 or Windows 10, and you get on a Mac, it's like, where's the start menu? You're on the Mac, you go to Windows, and you're like, how do I open preferences? So every operating system is a little different. They all accomplish the same task, to use your device. But these developers portals will also give you documentation on how to design an app that looks and feels like an Android device. How to, right here on iOS, how to design, what's our style, how many pixels, what's the colors to make it feel like an iPhone app. So all of these portals are very valuable to us, which we will look at about best practices, advice, style and colors. We can download a color swatch book from each of these places that says these are the preferred <laughs> shades of red. These are the best fonts to use to make it feel and look like an Android device. And via CSS, we have the same HTML and JavaScript. And via CSS, we can change the font for it to look the right way on an Android device, the right way on an iPhone device, the right way on a Windows device. And all behind the scenes, it's still HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. We'll also use the, these developers portals to go to the dashboard to publish our apps so that people can actually download our apps either for free or for pay. We will be able to sell our apps 99 cents, free, 10.99, whatever, and we will use these portals to publish. Question? Um, so you said that each one had a preferred shade of color. Yeah. How do you keep track of that? Do you make sure you want to get a certain color? No, uh, they give that to us. There is a screen here where, where they say, you know, if you're going to use these color schemes, these shades, these are the color schemes we recommend. Okay. We can use, of course, any design at all that we want, but if we want, you know, to look most authentic, uh, we want to use the fonts that they recommend, the colors that they recommend, but it's not, it's not anything about, like, you know, we're infringing on anything. So eventually we're going to create accounts to publish our projects, eventually. And we're going to see then uh, that even if we're giving away our apps, we still have to pay to become an official developer. Various prices. And we'll touch back on this again eventually, but on Windows I believe it's about $18 one time one-time cost. We'll go through the process much later in part three of the class. But we go through here, create an account, you pay like 18 or 20 dollars or something, and then you're an official Windows developer. You can publish your apps. On Android it's something like that too, like 20 dollars, 25 dollars, something like that, you know, the cost of a pizza. So you create an account, you pay for your one-time developer's license, and then you can publish apps for free or for 99 cents, or 10.99, or whatever. On the Mac, on Apple, you have to pay $99 per year. So on Apple, the barrier to entry is a lot higher. Yearly fee, and a lot higher, $99. But studies show developers make more money on iOS than they make on Android. You know, the culture of of Apple devices has always been from the beginning 99 cent songs, 99 cent movies, you know, paying. The culture of Android has always been much more of what's free, what can you give me, and not to put anyone down, but I use both. I use them all. I love them all. But 
for what's worked for Apple, and they are the, one of the most valuable <coughs> companies in the world. Apple and Google are battling it out constantly <coughs> for their value. They're both like multi-billion dollar companies. It works for them both. It works for them to be $20 one-time fee. It works for them $99 a year. They've got 80% market share, but you know, you talk to your friends and family that are not tech savvy and everyone's talking about iPad, iPad, iPad. It's not an iPad, it's a Samsung. It's not an iWatch. You know, it's not an Apple Watch. It's my Motorola watch. You know, they have such a big mind share that everything tech and mobile is Apple, and they invented it. But if you know the history of all of this, it's a very rich history. But that's something we need to deal with later in part three of the class, develop or creating the account. Question. So if you don't renew the next year, but you have to take your app down, or does it, does it stay because it was created under your, like, creative? If the person had downloaded it, they can keep it on their device. But I mean, like, it wouldn't still be available for purchase, and I still wouldn't be able to collect. No. Okay, so you because, have to keep that. Yeah. Really, okay. Yeah, so if you want to keep um, making money off of your app, you have to still be a developer, and you have to keep paying. Yeah. So, yeah. They will. This will be a process that we do in part three where we connect the account with a bank account, and then you will get paid when your app gets sold and such. Is there any limitation to how many apps you can upload your app to? I don't think so. I don't think there's a so limit to how many. The way that the company has, is a developer and you can advertise. Any Apple can develop an app using Firefox. Hmm. Can you say that again? Like, what, what do you mean? I mean, uh, if a developer, <laughs> if you, if I have an app, hmm. can I give it to you and you develop it? <clears throat> I, I don't see it. I, I don't quite get that because if you're the developer, you developed it. Why would you give it to because me? Because I don't want to put ninety-nine blocks. Oh. You give me a five blocks. That's whatever arrangement you're going to make with the other person, yeah. You know, if you make an arrangement with someone else for them to pay, and they're going to publish it, and you only pay them $5, but they pay 99 you know, it's whatever way you set it up. But probably somewhere in the distribution agreement, there's probably some line there that says you shouldn't do that. I won't tell, but probably in there it says, well, the person that creates the app should be the person that publishes it. Probably. If there is no limitation, how many apps you can develop in one year? Huh. It's in the array of business. It, it could. You have permission to upload yes. a million mm. apps you could. today. You could, if you make a million apps, yes. I mean, <laughs> not you. You can make an address. Everybody has an app. Plus you. It's possible, yeah. You, uh, they, They'll take your money, yeah. And, and you can publish as many as you want, and as long as you follow the rest of the rules about what kind of app it is, and mm -hmm. if it does not abuse customers and such, I guess. Another short question. Uh, it's a, everybody think everything on Apple or iOS is free virus. Is it right or just propaganda? It's very common to think that the things on Apple devices are, are virus free. Those devices can get viruses, but the, the, the reason that other devices get more viruses is because they're more popular. Windows computers get more viruses than Mac computers because Windows computers are 90% of all the computers. So there's a bigger target. The hackers want to target the biggest target. So they don't target Mac as much because it's a smaller target. For iOS or Android, Android devices, Android phones can get viruses and spam and all of that because they're 80% of the market share and Apple devices are less. So that doesn't mean that they do not get hacked and they do not get viruses. They do, but not as much because they're not the biggest target. So before they develop or put the app in public, they check for the virus? Yes, Apple is a little bit more controlling about that than Android. There's a lot more bad Android apps than, than <laughs> Apple ones. So we'll talk about that in part three. So that's the big idea, big idea there. So, um, for us, uh, we're going to use Cordova so that we don't have to learn each of these languages. Now, 
all of the part about publication will happen in part three. Part two will have will be about setting up our development environment and starting to work with real devices. We'll take a look first at some of the documentation here, and then we'll look at Visual Studio and how that ties in. So um, at the Cordova site here, the front page tells you what it is and how it works. The front page tells you how to set it up. Now, all of this software is already set up on these computers. At home, you would need to set it up, but I'm going to give you handouts that guide you the best way for you to set all of this up. I'll give you those handouts in a moment. I've got one ready to give you today, but in a moment. But notice the way this works is, okay, to install Cordova, this is a command line interface. Let's do this. Go to your Start menu and start typing command. Go to Start, type command, and you'll see command prompt. Launch command prompt. Plain old command prompt. This opens up the command prompt, DOS. Some of us that may have been using computers in the old days remember this. Um, this is what you would do before a graphical interface, before Windows, before a mouse. People were typing commands in the command prompt to do things. This is saying Cordova is command prompt focused. This is this is Cordova. You're going to type commands rather than clicking a pretty icon, rather than going file open, file new. You type commands. Just to get a sense of this, just to get a sense of how this works. This is already installed on our computers. Uh, just double check. Okay, not actually, but don't worry. So we would go through this process of installing. Don't do this, but just read what it says. In your command prompt, uh, you would uh, run this app and you would type this command, npm install dash g cordova. Then you would have the new command of cordova create my app. Then you would have the, the command cordova platform add browser or add android or add ios. Then you would have the command cordova run Android or browser. So in the command prompt you would type these commands to do what you need to do. Yes, it sounds very different than what most of us are used to. How many of you have ever opened the command prompt in your life? Accidentally. Accidentally. That counts. How many of you have opened it on purpose to use it on purpose? We do use it in the feud class, don't we? In these other classes. So this is not like an ancient archaic thing from the bygone era of computers. This is still used a lot because this is often much more efficient than let me go to the start menu, let me launch the app, let me click the file menu, let me click run, let me click this and that. You type Cordova run. Once you know the basic commands, you just type the command press enter and it does it. This won't do anything right now because it's not ready. But this is what Cordova is. We, we run various commands to accomplish various tasks. You open it on Mac. This works on the Mac too if you're in the terminal. Mac calls it the terminal, and here it's command prompt. And all of that information about how it works is under the documentation. So we're not going to really do anything in this window. I'm just showing you that this is the way, uh, one of the ways that we can make cross-platform apps because we would have the command, you know, Cordova create uh, Victor app one. Right? I would create my app. I would have the command Cordova platform add Android iOS Windows. I'm adding the operating system to my project Android iOS. Windows. Behind the scenes a bunch of stuff happens. And then eventually I would do Cordova build Android. And it would take my HTML code that I've written and process it and convert it, build it, into Android. Or I could do build Android and iOS and Windows. Or simply Cordova build. 
it will take all of the code that I've written in HTML in Notepad, and then it would be built for all of the platforms I added. I've taught this class for four years this way, with a command prompt, and I've seen people struggle because we're not used to this. A lot of us are not used to this, typing commands. If you don't type it right, if I type, you know, someone in different languages, it's spelled Cordova instead of Cordova, and people are spelling it in that way that they're used to spelling it, and it doesn't work. If you don't type the command the right way, Cordova, it doesn't work. And people say, why doesn't it work? Well, you didn't type it right. You know, on, on regular software, I click the icon and it does it, but in the command prompt, you have to type the code exactly. And there's like only like six or seven commands that you need to learn to run Cordova in the command prompt, but still people would, would struggle. And I have, you know, 35 people enrolled in the class, and by the end of the class, 20 completed. Well, the good news is that um, we can and we will be using a nice graphical interface that takes away the scary command prompt. You can still do it all in the command prompt, but we will use a, a modern software to click a button and do a thing, and that is Visual Studio. How many of you heard of Visual Studio before? Visual Studio is big famous software that's been around for like 20 years from Microsoft. It's an official Microsoft product that lets you create a bunch of kinds of apps, traditionally Windows apps. But because of the revolution of mobile devices, Microsoft saw the future and said, if we don't do something to also get on the bandwagon of mobile, we're going to be irrelevant. So a few years ago, they started to integrate the ability to create mobile device, uh, mobile apps in Visual Studio. It was all about, in the past, about creating a Windows app. And even though Windows computers are 90% of the market share, like 80% of global traffic on the internet is on a mobile device. It's not desktops anymore, it's not laptops, it's not Windows computers like it was. It's iPhones. It's Androids. People are using mobile devices more and more to visit websites, to download apps, to connect with friends and family. So Microsoft released, starting in 2015, a version of Visual Studio to focus on any developer, any app, any platform. And traditionally, Visual Studio was like $900. But now, because they've also seen, we need to get our foot in the door. Community edition, totally free, to be able to create apps for all devices. On top, behind the scenes of Visual Studio, Cordova. Intel has their own version of this thing, too. It's called Intel XDK. There's many... There's many players trying to do the same thing, create mobile apps quickly. I don't, I don't want to learn Java, I don't want to then also learn Objective-C or Swift and C Sharp. I want to get up and running quickly, make an app. So many of these companies now are releasing um, software to help you in there somewhere, but to help you develop quickly mobile projects. But behind the scenes of them all is still Cordova. It's behind this free software put out by this foundation that is continually improving, being developed, open source, so Microsoft can, can copy it and change it a little. Intel can copy it and change it a little. There's another one, Telerik, Telerik, however you pronounce it. They've got something like this too. They've got a way to quickly create mobile devices, mobile device projects behind the scenes. Cordova. So all roads nowadays lead to, Cord lead to Cordova. It's open source, and it lets us use our common web languages to target all devices. In this class, we're going to use Visual Studio. It's free for Windows and Mac. It needs some setup. 
but it's already done in this class. And I've got a handout for you that guides you how to set it up at home. It's If you're not afraid to download software and play with it and all of that, it's no big deal to set it up. But I do have these handouts that kind of guide you through how to, how to set it up in a way that I would recommend so that you're quickly using the software. What we're going to do is we're going to take our first break, but I'm going to show you the first handout. For the moment, this handout is for your information. You don't need to do anything on the handout in class. You need to do it at home because it's already all set up in this lab. I'll turn the printer on in a moment, but I just put in a new document in the network folder for MAD2. Remember, we're in a new class. Campus Hall Labs Dev 2, How to Number 1, How to Do More Than 1, Visual Studio. How to set up Visual Studio on Windows. I'm putting the finishing touches on the Mac one. I should have it by the weekend, maybe even by tomorrow. I'll put it on Blackboard. If you're on the Mac, it's a slightly different way to set it up on the Mac. I'll put that handout in the folder next time and on Blackboard. But if we take a quick look at that handout, I just tested these steps again to make sure they all should work. It tells you about going to the site, downloading it, you might have to set this up. So I try to have these things that you may see this, so choose that. Don't be confused about this and that. This is already all set up in, these, in this lab. We're ready to go. At home, you have to set this up. We're going to take our break so you can look at this page for a little bit. After the break, we'll look at it in a little more detail. Then we'll start to use Visual Studio right away. We'll start to see what do we need to use, how do we need to use it to start to create mobile cross-platform mobile apps. It's 7 o'clock. We'll take a break until 7.10, and then we'll go on.